Optimizing your YouTube channel can be confusing and time-consuming. That's where vidIQ comes in. vidIQ gives you detailed information about your channel, so you know when to upload and what tags to use. You can also take advantage of the browser plugin vidIQ Vision, which will give you useful information alongside your content. vidIQ is free and available using the link in the description. For years, NVIDIA has been offering budget versions of their graphics cards, and it makes sense, seeing as the vast majority of gamers don't have the disposable income to spend hundreds of dollars on just one component. The issue is, for years, budget cards have been a horrible value. For example, the GeForce 210, a $50 graphics card from 2009 that might be able to outperform a potato if you're lucky. The solution for many was to go on eBay and get something used that'd be more powerful for the same price. With the GT 1030, I'm not sure if that solution still works. Take the GTX 70 Ti, for example. Previously celebrated as a fantastic budget option, the GTX 750 Ti is now more expensive used than a GT 1030 is new, despite the GT 1030 being close to performance to the 750 Ti and the 750 Ti using double the CDP. Now, I'm not saying the 1030 is the best price to performance card you can buy. There are certainly better options. However, the GT 1030's price to performance ratio is actually close to an average sub $80 used graphics card. And considering the advantages like low heat production, low power draw, and low profile form factor, the GT 1030 is actually very enticing. So how does a 1030 actually perform? Well, I tested quite a few games and here's what I got. So as you can tell, the GT 1030 performed quite well with any game I could throw at it. However, NVIDIA's 30 series of graphics weren't always such a good value. A few years ago, the release of the GT 730, essentially all NVIDIA's budget offerings were really bad. Let's take a look at how the GT 1030 compares to the GT 730 and GTA 5. So, that means your next budget build should feature a GT 1030, right? Probably not. Unless TDP or form factor are extremely important to you, it'd be wise to spend an extra $40 and get an RX 560. For just 119 US dollars, you can buy a 4GB RX 560, which will be substantially faster than a 1030 and won't be as limited on the VRAM. That being said, the RX 560 isn't low profile and has a 75 watt TDP compared to the GT 1030's 30 watts. So really, if TDP, form factor, Pascal architecture, and most of all, a sub $8 price tag are your deciding factors, then the 1030 would be difficult to beat. But if those factors aren't relevant to you, an RX 550 or 560 would be a substantially better value. Anyway, that'll be it for this video. What are your experiences with budget graphics cards? Leave your comments down below, like, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.